Hey everybody, Final Thoughts time for Exodus Fleet, which is a very sharp auction, engine building, economic euro. I gotta say, I really appreciate the attention to detail they put in by you know coming up with like backstories for all the different factions and all that. They don't normally go into that much detail with your standard economic euro, but it's here, and it really does help the make the game come to life. Um, but the core gameplay is very, very sharp and really really satisfying. I mean, because at the beginning of the game, you've got nothing, but by the end of the game, you've built a gigantic fleet. You've saved thousands, hundreds of thousands? They don't actually say, I don't think, what the uh, actual conversion of each one of those little uh, colony people pieces are. But you know you've saved thousands thousands of people, and you've been able to pull off stuff that seemed impossible at the beginning of the game, when you had your one little ship and barely any storage. Um, and it, it's it's very, very solving. It's very, very good, uh, with, with a lot of replayability, too. Tons of different ships. After you get past those initial ones that will come out in a random order every time, the ships that come out with the special powers that they offer really give a lot of replayability, too. Although, I would caution the text on the cards is so tiny. Um, you know, I mean, and that can actually be pretty tricky. There was a couple times when Jen was having to. Can I? Read, what, what does that card say? What does it actually do? Very, very tiny text on black, white, tiny text on black cards does make for a little bit of usability issue. But if you get past that, you know, the the gameplay works really, really nicely. I would say though, I would really like to play this at more than two because while it works as a two-player game. And, you know, the, the once-around auction, okay, you make a bid, now I choose whether I want to beat that or not, is okay, and it's certainly worked well in games like Polyphony's. And I appreciate the fact that you can't, you have to bid the minimum of three. I really felt like there should have been something just a little bit more to make the auctions come to life more, because, I mean, if, if you look at the, uh, you know, the three and the four and the five player boards, wow, there's so much more interesting stuff that happens as a result of these auctions, or more interesting outcomes and variety. Um, with, with one other player, and okay, you make a bid, and now I decide whether I beat it or not. And all I gotta do is beat it by one. So whatever number you choose, I just have to go one more than you. Just feels, it doesn't quite feel up to the same, um, you know, fun factor standard that everything else this game has going on. And I find myself wishing, man, I wish there was just one more bidder here. And this is amazing, you know, because Tasty Mistral Games, the publisher, they put out Homesteaders, which has one of the best examples of an automated third bidder for two-player auction gaming that I've ever seen. It's absolutely phenomenal. It works so well, and it would work so great here. But heck, even if there was something along the lines of in the two-player game, you know what? I can't raise you by one. I always have to raise you by at least two to somewhat replicate the fact that, oh yeah, you, you bid the minimum. Okay, well, I'll just bid more, and I can get away with that in a two-player game. With more players, I know I can't get away with that. Because that's, I think, probably the most interesting thing about the auction element. It's once around, but when it comes around for your opportunity to pick the one number you're going to bid, you have to bid higher or you could bid lower. Okay, you know what? I don't need to be the first to mine this planet. I'd be happy to be the second. You bid six? Yeah, you know what? I'll come in at four. Um, you know, because I don't want to be last. And now, if somebody else wants to go after me, they can go for three, and they can get last place. Or, you know, if, if you're playing at the higher play account, you know, last place means nothing at all. I that extra level of excitement just doesn't exist. It implicitly doesn't exist in the two-player game because there's no system for a third bidder or something to just make it come alive. And I think that's a missed opportunity. And like I said, it's surprising coming from the publisher that to date has put out maybe the best two-player auction system on the market. Period. I would have loved to have seen some of that in Exodus Fleet. Heck, maybe at some point down the road, if Exodus Fleet ever gets an expansion, uh, it'll introduce some more stuff like that. Like uh, Fleet, actually, not Exodus Fleet, but just Fleet. The game about building up a, uh, a fleet of, of fishing vessels is an auction game where you're engine building as well. It was, and you know, it worked well as a two-player game, but when they did the expansion for Fleet, they come up with another really great dummy bidder to make the two-player game that much more exciting, and it works phenomenal too. I know these systems would work great with Exodus Fleet, and that's what's just, it's just missing just that little bit to be a phenomenal two-player experience as opposed to a good, solid two-player experience. But I suspect, because, I mean, how I mean, it's not that common an auction where you can purposely and strategically choose to underbid your opponent as opposed to overbid. That's awesome. And I regret not being able to experience that if I only ever play this as a two-player game. One missed trick in an otherwise great game. Again, if you've got good eyesight and you can read the really tiny text on the cards. But otherwise, neat, neat game. Um, you know, very, very thematic. Very satisfying. You know, the escalation curve is through the roof on this. And that's it, folks. That is Exodus Fleet. 
Thanks for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye. Uh,